is Talk About a Thing. He's lived in Shanghai as a foreigner and experienced some odd things. He used to live in Sweden and he likes to talk about web development, programming, working online, and freelancing. There's a lot to unpack, so let's do it. This is Talk About a Thing. And now your host, Perala Hummer. Hey there, it's episode 14 of Talk About a Thing with me, Perola Hammer. I'm really glad you decided to tune in today. In this bite-sized episode, we're diving into the basics of video game design, a topic I'm super passionate about and hope to make a career out of someday. Let's jump into it. If you've ever played a video game and thought you had an idea for making it better, or just have a lot of game ideas and want to do something with them, you might be dreaming about creating your own video games. It's important to understand that although some video games, such as Minecraft, are basic in appearance, the creator still needed to put in a lot of work to make that game. In comparison, some of the major titles, such as Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed series, require hundreds of people to make the game. To make a polished, functional video game, you need work done on programming, art, sound, design, writing, and testing. Programming, also known as code, is what makes 3D worlds look like they have real-world physics, and it guides players from one part to another. Programming defines the rules of a game's universe. It's behind everything. Every action that you take and every reaction that the game world has involves programming. Art also referred to as graphics or graphic design, is highly visible in video games and arguably the most memorable component. Art can be as simple as 2D images or complex 3D models. High-end video games, such as the earlier Assassin's Creed example, typically use 3D modeling, which requires teams of artists dedicated to creating the models and high-performance technology to generate all of the complex visual details in real time. If you have a small budget and a small team, your best option is 2D art. With 2D featured in classic games like Super Mario Land, you can appeal to wider audiences because of low performance requirements, meaning a lower cost to own hardware that will play the game. It's worth noting that art typically includes animation too, to make things like movement appear realistic, which is another reason for using 2D because you have less details and angles to animate. Sound, or audio, ranges from orchestral pieces in high-end titles to synthesized beats created with cheap software. Jam Studio, for example, offers royalty-free software for creating music with its library of pre-recorded notes from a variety of instruments. The website costs a small monthly subscription fee for its service, but it's cheaper than paying large amounts of money to professionals. If you're making a video game that includes characters talking, you may also need voiceover recordings. Professional sounding voiceover is important for high-end games, but you can get away with recording yourself using a microphone if quality isn't important. You can also record yourself making a variety of noises for sound effects if you are struggling with finding realistic ones. Design is what gives programmers direction. It encompasses everything from what a game's boundaries or rules will be to what its core gameplay will be. Gameplay is what players will spend most of their time doing. For example, in Assassin's Creed, players do a lot of jumping, climbing, running, and assassinating. It's the job of designers to think of concepts like these and then translate them into how players can, in real time, do something like assassination. This means they must work closely with the programmers who help ground them in what's feasible with the available technology and the writers whose story concepts often define what kinds of gameplay will fit within the context of the setting. Writers have a similar job to designers in that their work is conceptual, but unlike designers, they tell stories rather than describe actions. They determine what kind of world a game takes place in, what kind of characters inhabit it, and what those characters will say to each other, if anything. 
A writer's job is not dissimilar to most writing's jobs with one key difference. Video games often have budget and technological constraints that push storytelling into a narrow window. Where movies or television can create detailed worlds of CGI and use real people, video games are limited to whether current technology can smoothly run complex graphics and programming. For this reason, many concepts by writers and designers tend to start out ambiguous and slowly narrow into something that is workable for a video game. Testing is one of the final steps of creating and releasing a polished video game, but it is no less important for being late in the process. Professional game developers have a team of testers called the QA department, short for quality assurance, because programming involves a lot of complex logic and unexpected conflicts between different software. It's impossible for them to anticipate every scenario. QA has the job of locating and reporting major errors, typically called bugs, before release, so that programmers can fix them. Although you might think that testing as a job would be fun because someone pays you to play video games, Playing to test is different from playing a game just to play it. As a tester, you need to be skilled at finding ways to break a game, and you need to be skilled at communicating the errors you find with sufficient detail. Strong communication is vital because others testers, and sometimes programmers themselves, need to be able to reproduce errors in the game. Without being able to reproduce an error, it's almost impossible to figure out what the cause of the error is and solve the problem. Business is the final part of creating and selling video games. It isn't technically a part of making a functional video game, but if you ever want to sell one, business will be involved. Realize that if you work with a small team or independently, then someone will have to handle things like marketing and sales while doing other jobs to create the game. The steps involved to making a video game might look intimidating, but some developers have had success making games independently. If you want to make a video game by yourself or with a small team, you're likely going to be doing several jobs. But if you're realistic about what you can do with your skills and you're realistic about the scope of your game, then you can make your game ideas a reality. Thanks for tuning in to this episode where we explored the fascinating world of video game design. If you've ever daydreamed about crafting your own gaming masterpiece, remember this. It may seem like a colossal undertaking, but with determination and realistic expectations, you can turn your game ideas into reality. From programming and art to sound, design, writing, and testing, Game development is a multifaceted journey that demands various skills and expertise. Whether you're envisioning a 2D classic or aiming for the grandeur of a 3D epic, there's a path for every aspiring game creator. Don't forget about the importance of storytelling and the collaborative effort required to bring your vision to life. Writers and designers shape the game's universe, while programmers and artists breathe life into it. And let's not overlook the unsung heroes of quality assurance who tirelessly hunt for bugs to ensure a polished product. Now, when it comes to business, remember that even the most fantastic games need a savvy approach to marketing and sales. If you're a lone wolf or part of a small team, you'll wear multiple hats, but it's all part of the game-making adventure. In the end, making a video game is an exhilarating journey filled with challenges and triumphs. Stay true to your skills, stay realistic about your project scope, and you'll find your way to creating and sharing your very own gaming masterpiece. Keep dreaming, keep creating, and keep playing. You've been listening to Talk About a Thing. Parala has lived an interesting life. From life as a foreigner in Shanghai to social media and technology in China, web development, programming, working online, freelancing, he covers a lot. We hope you've enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to like, rate, and review. 
We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit us up on all the social media networks at Parallel Hummer. See you next time on Talk About a Thing.